Now milestone number three. This came with the hominids, our ancestors. And the primary thing, it started, see they were scavengers initially. They'd find you know, a dead antelope or something and they'd say, wow, this is great, let's eat it, it's only three days old. So, uh, <laughs> the, problem is, the problem is other scavengers would come and they'd want to take it away. And hominids learn that you can throw rocks and chase them away sometimes. And so they started throwing rocks. Well, you would not believe how much that started. The consequences of that are enormous because they then developed a completely new system for hunting. It, there was the same process of hunting, when you find something, stalking, getting up close to it. But then when they pounce, they throw a rock. They don't run and chase it, they just throw a rock. And then the animal would get up and run away. Now, you might ask, what good does that do? Well, then come two other evolutionary developments that were absolutely crucial to the success of the human race. The first was nakedness. And the second was the eccrine gland. This thing right here, there's a micrograph of it. This makes sweat. We have lots and lots of them. Very few animals have anywhere. Nobody has as many eccrine glands as we do. Because it would be useless if you got a covering of fur. But if you're naked, then that sweat evaporates and it cools you off. And you may recall that hominids evolved in equatorial Africa, where it is very hot. And so what they would do is they'd throw the rock and the animal would run away. And then they'd add a new step, tracking. They follow the trail. They learn what the tracks mean, how twigs have changed and leaves and so forth. They learn how to follow the animal. And eventually they get close to it again. They stalk as close as they can. They jump up and throw another rock. The animal gets up and runs away again. And they do this over and over and over. And what happens is the animal overheats. It simply can't keep itself cool. But the hominid can. And as a result, the hominid stays cool long enough to chase down that animal, bring it to the point of heat exhaustion where it just lies down on the ground panting, and then the hominid can close in and kill it. And that was a major factor in the success of hominids. But it required the development of a new and very special skill, rock throwing. In order to uh, see, the harder you hit them, the sooner they'll get injured, they'll, they'll you know, stumble and so forth. That'll, that'll make it go faster. And you know, this may be a strong animal, it may take all day to chase it down. So throwing rocks is very important. And the main things are, you need to throw a big rock very fast, and you need to throw it very accurately. And so hominids developed actually hominid males developed very good skills at rock throwing. You can see there are two things required to do this. First, you need large pectoral muscles. These are the primary source of power in a rock throw. Biceps are a secondary source. So you want large pectorals, large biceps. That's what makes you a good rock thrower. By the way, you know, I'm sure you've heard these things about, well, Human beings are such wimps, we're weaklings. We can't smell very well, we can't see very well, we can't hear. We don't have any claws, we don't have big teeth, don't have armor, we can't run very fast. We're total weaklings, except we're smart. That's the only advantage we have, right? Wrong. We do have one thing we can do better than anybody else, and that is throw rocks. <laughs> no one can throw rocks like we can. And there's a way to prove it. This weekend, go down to the zoo and go to the chimpanzee. <laughs> and chimpanzees also throw, but they're no good at all. And so what you do is you go to the chimpanzee thing and then go, Adam. And they'll get mad, and they'll start flinging feces at you. 
but they're such lousy throwers, they'll never hit you. And what you do then is pick up the feces and you nail them, thereby proving your superiority. <laughs> so, so you need big pectoral muscles and big biceps, but you also need one other thing, practice. Lots of practice. And that's why little boys are always throwing rocks. <laughs> little boys love to throw rocks. But the thing is, they never outgrow it. When they get older, they just stop throwing rocks. Instead, they throw baseballs, basketballs, bocce balls, boomerangs, cavers, the sky, footballs, American footballs, frisbees, fruit cakes, <laughs> hammers, knives, snowballs, shot puts, spears, tomahawks, volleyballs, water polo balls. And if they can't throw it, they kick it. <laughs> and if they can't kick it, they hit it with a stick. <laughs> Men love throwing things. And over the centuries, they have developed better and better ways of throwing things, like the atlatl, a spear thrower. And then later on, they figured out a really great way to throw rocks, the sling. And then they got better with the bow and arrow. And then they started building big machines to throw really big rocks. <laughs> and then came cannons that throw really big rocks. And they built bigger and bigger cannons. And now they build great big cannons for fun. <laughs> <laughs> These things can shoot a pumpkin more than a kilometer. <laughs> so, and when they can't actually throw the real thing, they play at throwing things. I mean, think about it. What is the most powerful, most accurate way to throw a rock really, really fast? A gun. And that's why they love guns. So to the women in the audience, I will say, if you want to understand men, this is all you need to understand. <laughs> this is secondary. <laughs> I will also point out that this defines many of our concepts of masculinity. You will know that these highly uh, masculine people all possess very large pectoral muscles and very large biceps because that's what we consider to be you know, these guys can really throw rocks. <laughs> another thing, another way to demonstrate, though, your prowess as a man, your masculinity, is to burp. <laughs> because a loud burp is indicative of a large chest cavity. And so little boys like to say, I'm a man, burp! <laughs> so... Uh, I mean, th this stuff still has profound effects on human behavior. And I'd like to point out that with this, the balance between locomotor learning and cerebral learning has changed again in favor of cerebral learning. Uh, throwing a rock accurately requires a certain amount of thinking. You have to estimate the weight of the rock, its shape, how it flies through the air, the range you're going for. There's, there's a certain amount of thinking involved in that. 